John McMullen, our 97.3 ESPN Eagles insider, picked the time in the 9 o'clock hour because the Eagles are off today, and John should technically be off. But PT harasses him and bugs him and says, please come on, please come on. And John is such a kind man that he's joining us now. John, you got a collectible to start with or a giveaway uh, that uh, you got at some point that you still hold on to? Wow. Uh, one of the few perks, we get a lot of cool stuff. I think the coolest was... I'll give a shout out to Adam Aaron, uh, who used to run uh, the Sixers early in the Josh Harris regime, put together a giveaway where they gave away pieces of the court. Oh, fun. And Will Chamberlain scored 100 points. So I think that was the coolest giveaway I've ever seen. Yeah, I like stuff like that. I mean, I haven't revealed what mine is yet. I have I have a couple things that I want to talk about, but, uh, you know, we'll talk some Eagles football uh, I, and I love stuff like that. You know, uh, we had Mike McGarry on from the press of Atlantic City earlier, and he said, I'm old school. I got a bat, like a real bat, not a wiffle bat, not a replica bat, not a mini bat. You know, in the 70s, I went to Yankee Stadium, and they gave you a genuine bat that you yeah, could go can you imagine? Uh, I, back then, the attendance wasn't that great, but still 20,000 people uh, walking around the Bronx with a <laughs> bat. Maybe not the the best idea. Right. They switch. Uh, they've changed things over the years. But I think it's really cool. When some, and if you think about the history of professional basketball, the hundred point game, I'm pretty surprised they gave that they gave that away. Yeah, Adam Aaron uh, engineering a little publicity for an awful Sixers team, and John McMullen's got a piece of that court. Uh, all right, Johnny. Uh, a couple things happened. I think uh, you at first. I gave you credit. When it did officially happen yesterday, later after you were on, that the Eagles signed an offensive lineman from Army, and he had to get a waiver to be able to sign with the Eagles. But tell us more about this new player and Jeff Stoutland's new project. Yeah, Brett Toss, who is an offensive lineman, uh, was considered a, a, a decent prospect in 2018. Uh, I think that's the last time he's been on a football field was at the senior bowl uh leading up to the draft but you remember uh that service commitment anyone has from the u.s military academies uh, has to be two years uh before you start uh your professional career if you think back to david robinson uh maybe that's the the, the best example that people can remember but uh president trump said it, earlier uh, in his uh, administration that if uh, people had a chance to play professional sports, he would sign a waiver and allow them to at least put off their service requirement. And he did it earlier with uh, Austin Cutting, who was a seventh-round draft choice as a long snapper with the Vikings. So that kind of opened up the door. Uh, and, and Toth has been a legitimate prospect and his agent was working hard behind the scenes. They got the waiver, uh, and the Eagles were interested, and, and they brought him in, which was confirmed last week that they were going to bring him in uh, as if he could get the waiver. And once Cutting got his waiver, it was pretty clear that ultimately he was going to get it. Yeah, I heard a lot of uh, Villanueva, or I saw a lot of Villanueva posts, too, because uh, the Pittsburgh player that actually started with the Eagles, you know, uh, I saw a lot of that connection, too. I mean, could could we be that lucky to, to have uh, history repeat itself? Well, you never know. They weren't lucky with Villanueva. <laughs> That's true. Chip he was Kelly, terrible in Philly. Yeah. Well, he wasn't. And Chip Kelly just saw him. He's six foot nine, and, and if you think back to the Chip Kelly era, the Eagles were playing uh, a 3-4 defense, and that means you need hands who are uh, five techniques, as it's called, who, who are long and lanky. And he looked like a five technique, I will say that. And, and that's what the Eagles tried him at. Didn't work out, obviously. They waived him. The Steelers signed him uh, to the practice squad, moved him back to the offensive side of the ball. He's really athletic. You know, the interesting thing about Villanueva was he, he played mainly tight end. He played some receiver in Navy and, and, and offensive tackle as well at Army. Excuse me. And he, the whole thing about that is you could tell how athletic he was and he was going to grow into his body. Uh, and the Steelers put him at left tackle, and obviously he's turned into a two-time Pro Bowl selection, so it's worked out. 
Uh, but the Eagles had him first. Uh, weren't lucky. Maybe this works out a little better. Toss is a, a, a more of a natural offensive lineman. But we talked a little bit yesterday, Pete, about Wiz and what Jeff Stoutland likes, and this is a perfect example. Really athletic. you got to mold the piece of clay, but that's what Jeff likes. John McMullen's with us, our 97.3 ESPN Eagles insider. Now, during the week, full disclosure, John, uh, as much as I listen to the station uh, quite a bit, I don't always hear your segment. And, uh, what? I-, I just have to put that out there. So so imagine the smile that came across my face this morning as I say, let me see a couple of these things that John's been posting. Oh, yeah, this is right up my alley. Training Camp Awards. This may be my favorite column you've ever written quite frankly, because uh, it has the envelopes and, and you go through. I mean, let, let's start. Uh, well, first of all, have, have you written this column before? I mean, is this a variation on a theme? Yeah, I do it every year at the end of the training camp portion uh, of the Eagles uh, summer, which is technically over, uh, ended on Tuesday. And now they get into more of a, a regular season Format from a practice standpoint, you know, the veteran players get to go home and uh, things of that. So things do shift this week and the training camp, the official training camp portion is actually over. So every year we give out the awards. All right. So what do we have about eight to 10 to do in about uh, seven or eight minutes? So we got a, about a minute answer for each one, right? Let's uh, let's start with most improved. Who did you pick? Uh, I picked Isaac Sayamalo. Who, who was, and I mentioned if you look at the Eagles offensive line and, and, and all the accolades, most of them have Jason Peters uh, probably going to end up in the Hall of Fame. You got Lane Johnson, Jason Kelsey, who are all pros. You got Brandon Brooks, who's uh, a pro bowler. Uh, so Isaac is always thought of as the weak link, so to speak. And he is. Uh, I mean, when, <laughs> but that's not necessarily a bad thing when your peers are all that good. And, and I think he he has stood out as that weak link before, but I think, uh, as I described it, the weak link is getting stronger and stronger. And he now deserves that job. He's kind of given it at first. We talked about that a little bit yesterday. Now he's kind of earned it. How about uh, the fact that you're able to tilt, uh, have two categories here for the best rookie and best fighter? That's the same person. So see, we can group these together. This will help us speed up. <laughs> yeah, Andre Dillard, and, and he should be. I, I mean, he's the first-round pick, but I think even fans have gotten to see it in the preseason games, how natural of a pass protector he is. So I don't think any of that should be a surprise. The fighting is <laughs> just tongue-in-cheek. He got in the three fights uh, <laughs> last week, and – Hey, maybe that's a good thing with an offensive lineman because you got to be nasty. If there's one position you got to be nasty at, it's offensive line. So uh, the Eagles are really, really strong uh, up front, and that bodes well for a good season. Uh, the toughest rookie debut, and, and you had – what's the word you have uh, the title for 0.0 passer rating? The Blue Tarski from Animal House. Oh, there you go. That's what I thought you were referencing. Yeah, if you remember, zero point zero. Uh, for that, probably the younger generation isn't going to remember that film. But oh, I do. You should go. Yeah, you should go. Out, the people listening should go out of their way to watch it. It's tremendously uh, one of the funniest movies of all time, and that was one of the characters in college, and he got a zero point zero. Ah, uh, Dean Wormer. That That's Clayton, great. But yes. <laughs> And Clay, that was Clayton Thorson's passer rating uh, in his first game. And we talked about that as well, much improved week two. But overall, has not looked great in, in training camp. All right, best undrafted rookie, and it's at a position that you say could be a question mark for the Eagles. Yeah, well, I, I, I mean, a lot of injuries. I, I mean, Nigel Bradham isn't on the field uh and and not quite healthy coming off offseason toe surgery. Then Camus Gruger Hill got injured in camp. Uh, so I think of any position uh, on the field, there's probably the most question marks at linebacker. And TJ Edwards was a, a high profile undrafted pick. Most people assumed he would get drafted. And I think he's shown the ability that he probably should have gotten drafted. Uh, and we talk about 
fits and roles on this team and, and people who have an opportunity to make something, maybe that Camus injury gives him a, a little bit of a, a slightly door ajar to make a move to make this roster. Great category here. You've got the uh, toughest player to figure out. Yeah, well, it's, it's always – I mean, there's a lot of tough players to figure out. There's no question about that. There always is in every single training camp, and especially when you don't have as many reps as you did in the past. And I think that's part of this issue and, and coaches – try to figure things out. And I think that perfectly describes Matt Collins because, uh, it, look, everyone goes back to his rookie season and they remember the backpack dance. I even got a tweet about it. I mean, that's one play. He, he didn't play last year. He had these mysterious core injuries. Uh, he's gotten hurt against, uh, again this year with a hip injury. And you look at the players behind him, the Greg Wards of the world, the Mark and Michelle's, the Charles Johnson's, uh, they've all performed better. So you kind of try to figure it out. Where do the Eagles coaching staff think about them? And I got to tell you, Pete, when Mike Rowe was talking last week, the body language was not good. And right. The words were not good. And it basically said, he's got to get on the field. And I think that's where we are with Matt Collins. If he's going to make this team, he better get on the field. You're, you're lying. I remember it all the time. Can't make the club from the tub. John McMullen's with us, our 97.3 ESPN Eagles insider. In the interest of time, I'll just steer traffic to our website for categories such as toughest injury, best late pickup, fastest player, best quote, Mr. Novacare. All those categories are on there. You got to read the article. I, I will let you. Why don't you cleanly tell us the best quote? Uh, I'll, I'll throw that one out there. <laughs> Who gave that? One of the yeah, it's funny. The best quotes seem to always, you can't say them on the radio. Lane Johnson gave a great one uh, this year talking about a, a bad practice that the Eagles often had. And he said, and anyone who's met Lane, he's a very funny guy, very honest. But he said, that's football. Sometimes you get bleeped on. Sometimes you have birthday cake. So, Done. Mic drop. <laughs> uh, yeah, exactly. It wasn't going to get better than that. But it made me think about some of the great quotes of all time. I think John McKay, the old Tampa Bay coach, Southern Cal in college, he might have been the funniest coach of all time. And he was asked about his team's execution. Uh, and he said he was all for it. I don't think it would ever <laughs> get above that. Tom Moore, who somebody, Dan Pompey, I think, wrote about him yesterday. Uh, Pete Manning's offense coordinator and longtime Colts coach. He had a great one. Someone asked him. Oh, this is also dirty. I'll clean it up. Okay. <laughs> uh, why, why, why do the the backup quarterbacks don't get a lot of reps? And this is again during the Peyton Manning era. <laughs> and he said, <laughs> he, he said, if number eighteen goes down, we're bleeped, and we don't practice bleep. <laughs> oh, that's great. I love it, Johnny Mac. Hey, uh, Mike Gill chimed in by the way in his uh, loving Mike Gill way, who uh, sent me a text and said. E.T., the title of John's article is 97.3 ESPN Annual Training Camp Awards. Annual <laughs> suggests he does it every year. <laughs> it's uh, not even 9.30, Mike Gill. Relax, man. I'm waking up, too.